Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Kevin. And this week, we're gonna be checking out a video that I recently did for our upcoming Certified Ethical Hacker or CEH course. Specifically, we're gonna see how to sniff or how to capture network traffic. And this video actually builds on a video that I posted a few weeks ago discussing SPAN, RSPAN, and ERSPAN. Specifically, we're going to be configuring span in this video and capturing traffic using Wireshark. And bad news, the traffic is not encrypted. It's Telnet traffic. And we're going to see how easy it is to read that plain text Telnet traffic. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a like down below and subscribe so you don't miss any of our weekly content. Now join me for a look at sniffing network traffic. In this video, we want to define sniffing and identify a couple of different variants of sniffing that you need to know about for the CEH exam. First, what is sniffing? Sniffing is going to use a device called a protocol analyzer, which could be as simple as a laptop running some software that we'll talk about, but it's going to be some device that can capture packets appearing on the network. We capture packets off of the wire, and we can then go back and analyze those packets. Now, when we talk about protocol analyzers, some, such as the one we're going to be using in this course, are software-based. This could be a PC or a laptop whose network interface card is placed into promiscuous mode. Promiscuous mode means that that NIC, the network interface card, it can accept traffic destined for different MAC addresses, uh, different than uh, the MAC address of that NIC card. And if we can put our NIC into promiscuous mode, we can monitor all the traffic that's coming over the wire to our laptop. Another option is hardware-based. Now, this is a lot more expensive and a lot more scalable. This is a very heavy-duty protocol analyzer. In fact, when I used to work down at Walt Disney World in Florida, we had a bank of these hardware-based protocol analyzers. And when there was an issue on the network, one of us would grab a protocol analyzer off of uh, the desk and we would hop in the company van and go to wherever the situation was and we would start to sniff traffic. Not for hacking purposes, but for legitimate network troubleshooting purposes. And a hardware-based protocol analyzer can have multiple NICs. We might be connected to multiple subnets at the same time if we're positioned near a router or near a multi-layer switch. A hardware-based protocol analyzer might be able to see some frames that we cannot see with a software-based protocol analyzer, such as frames that have errors. Maybe we have runts or giants that are not going to be seen by a software-based protocol analyzer. Our NIC's going to look at that frame and say, that's not valid, and drop it. But maybe a hardware-based protocol analyzer can. And the specific software-based protocol analyzer we're going to be using in this course is called a Wireshark. You can get a free copy by going to wireshark.org. And uh, we're gonna see how to select traffic that we want to monitor using Wireshark coming up later in this video. But first, I want to define for you two different types of sniffing that the CEH exam wants you to know about. The first one is called passive sniffing. And with passive sniffing, we as the ethical hacker or network administrator, we don't have to send out any traffic in the network. We hook up the protocol analyzer and we start receiving traffic. Now, we could do this with an Ethernet hub. Now, we don't see those much these days, but an Ethernet hub allows us to connect our protocol analyzer or our sniffer to any port on that hub, and we'll see any traffic appearing on that hub. Let's do a quick review of how an Ethernet hub functions. Sometimes an Ethernet hub is called a bit spitter because... That's literally what it does. It takes bits in on one port and then makes copies of those bits and sends those copies out all other ports. Let's say laptop one wants to send a print job down to the printer. Well, it's gonna send traffic into that hub, which is gonna say, here comes some traffic. I wanna make sure it gets to its intended destination. So it's gonna send copies of those bits out all other ports, not just to the printer, but to laptop two and the server. So if I wanted to monitor or sniff traffic between laptop one and the printer, and I'm running my sniffing software on laptop two, I could do that with a hub. In fact, that's what I did one time when I was investigating a situation at a university. The university thought that one of their employees had a wares site set up. They had a collection of software available on their computer and they were making it freely available over the internet. And to gather evidence, I did a packet capture. What I did is I inserted a hub between the network that had the suspect and uh, the internet, 
and I was able to say monitor traffic going to this specific IP address and we were able to gather some evidence. However, that was way back in the 1990s. Today, we're hard pressed to even find a hub. We're probably gonna be faced with an ethernet switch. Let's remind ourselves how an ethernet switch functions. An ethernet switch is not a bit spitter, generally. It's going to learn what MAC addresses live off of which ports. Remember a MAC address is a 48-bit address burned into the network interface card? It's broken into two parts. The first 24 bits are the OUI, the Organizationally Unique Identifier, the vendor code, who made this card, and the last 24 bits are assigned by that vendor. And the switch is going to build a MAC address table like we see on screen, and when it receives a frame destined for a specific MAC address, it's going to check that table and say, do I know where this frame is destined? Oh yeah, it's going to this MAC address which lives off of this port. I'm only going to send it therefore out of this port. As an example, let's say that laptop one wants to talk to the printer. Now initially, the switch has not learned any MAC addresses. So when laptop one sends a frame down to the printer, the switch doesn't know that the printer with the all C's MAC address is off of interface gig three. So what does the switch do? It does something called flooding. It's going to take a copy of that frame coming in on gig one, and much like a hub does, it's going to send a copy of that frame out all other ports, other than the port on which the frame was received. However, when that happens, the switch is going to learn something. The switch is going to learn that the all A's MAC address, laptop one, lives off of gig one. When it sees that, it says, let me make a note of that in my MAC address table. And good news, the frame, or at least a copy of the frame, made it to the printer. And the printer is going to respond. And when the printer responds, the switch sees that the all C's MAC address lives off of gig three. So the next time laptop one wants to send traffic to the printer, it's only gonna be sent out of gig three because the switch now knows where the printer lives. Similarly for laptop two, maybe it wants to go to the server. Initially, the switch doesn't know where the server lives. So it's gonna flood that traffic out of all other ports. The server gets it and it sends traffic back to laptop two. But in that exchange, did you see what happened? When the frame came in from laptop two into the switch, the switch made a note that the all B's MAC address, laptop two, lived off of gig two. And then when the return traffic came back from the server, which has the all D's MAC address, the switch learned that that MAC address lived off of gig four. But initially, laptop two's traffic was flooded out all other ports. But now, when a frame comes into the switch destined for any of these four MAC addresses, it's only gonna be sent out that port. So here's the challenge when it comes to sniffing. If I'm running my sniffing software like Wireshark on Laptop 2, and I want to monitor traffic going between Laptop 1 and the printer, or Laptop 1 and the server, I'm not gonna see it. Because the switch is only gonna be sending that traffic out of appropriate ports, and I'm not the appropriate port. So in a case like that, we have an issue. The good news is, many of our ethernet switches support a feature called port mirroring. And port mirroring is going to allow us to say, I want to make a copy of traffic appearing on a specific port, and then I want to send those copies out to a specific port, the port to which my sniffer is attached. Or sometimes we can say, I want to make a copy of all traffic appearing on an entire VLAN, an entire subnet in other words, and I want to send all of that traffic to my sniffer. Here's an example of port mirroring. Let's say that the PC and the server are talking to one another, but I want to monitor some of that traffic. What I could do is attach my sniffer to a port on the ethernet switch. And I could give some instructions as we're gonna do in a few moments in this video and say, I want to monitor all traffic appearing on that very first ethernet port to which the PC is attached. Then when the server sends traffic to the PC, not only will that traffic go to the PC, it will also be sent to my sniffer. That's another type of passive sniffing if we go in and configure port mirroring or on Cisco Catalyst switches, which is what we're gonna be using, we're gonna use a feature called SPAN, Switch Port Analyzer, which does port mirroring. And then later in this module, we're gonna be taking a look at some different ways to do active sniffing. Because if we're not the administrator and we have no permission to go in and configure port mirroring on that switch, how do we then convince traffic to come to us? Well, that's gonna require us to send some traffic out into the network. We might use a MAC flooding attack, an ARP poisoning attack, or a DHCP spoofing attack. But first, let's go out and take a look at how we can set up port mirroring on a Cisco Catalyst switch 
to capture traffic and then analyze some unencrypted traffic inside of Wireshark. And we're going to be able to see username and password information, which emphasizes the point that we should not be using an unencrypted protocol like Telnet. Now let's take a look at how we can do a packet capture using port mirroring. And here we have a Cisco Catalyst switch and the port mirroring feature that Cisco has is called SPAN. And what we're going to be mirroring is traffic going from this laptop to a Cisco router. Now I'm going to be doing something we should not do in production. I'm going to be using Telnet, which is not encrypted, to connect between this laptop and a Cisco router. And we're going to capture those packets on this laptop and we're going to be able to see in very plain text, here's the username and here's the password because I'm running Wireshark here. Now before we get set up and start doing our packet capture and analysis, let's do this. Let's see how things operate normally when we're using a switch as opposed to a hub. So I'm going to go over to this laptop and let's get Wireshark started. I'll select the interface that's going to be carrying the traffic. Double click that. And we have a lot of ARPs, so I'll say not ARP to filter those. And specifically, I want to be capturing traffic from my victim laptop using Telnet traffic. So I'm going to say IP.ADDR equals equals, and I'll give the IP address of the laptop. It's 172.16.108.0.0. And I'll give two ampersands and say Telnet. So I just want to be capturing that Telnet traffic. Let's apply that filter. And let's start our capture or restart it. And I won't save anything. So now we're just monitoring traffic coming from this laptop that's using Telnet or coming into this laptop using Telnet. So let's go over to this laptop and let's do a telnet to 172.16.2.90. And it's asking for a username. My username is Kevin and my password is Cisco. And I'm logged in. But if we take a look at our sniffer, we don't see anything. We haven't captured any traffic here. So how do we fix that? Well, let me get logged out of our router. And let's go to this Cisco Catalyst switch and we're going to plug into the console port and we're going to set up the span feature, which gives us port mirroring. What I'm going to do is plug in the console port to the switch and I've got a USB adapter that we're going to plug in to my Mac and I'm going to be running a utility or an app called Serial. And I'm going to open the USB controller and now we're sitting at switch one. Let's configure span. I'll go into global configuration mode by saying conf term, that's short for configure terminal. And I want to define a monitoring session. We can have multiple monitoring sessions. I'm gonna say monitor session and let's give it a locally unique identifier of one. And I want to specify who's the source. The source is going to be interface gigabit zero slash two. That's the port into which our victim laptop is connected. That's going to be our source. And now let's specify the destination for this monitor session. I'll say monitor session one. We keep that the same. Destination is going to be interface gigabit zero slash eight. That's the port into which my sniffer is attached. Now let's go back to Wireshark and see if we have any traffic now. I'm going to do another telnet Let's tell that to 172.16.2.90. We'll press enter. Ah, this time we see traffic being captured in Wireshark. Fantastic. I'm gonna type in my username of Kevin and my password of Cisco. And I'm going to go over to Wireshark now and I'm gonna stop that capture. Now what I can do is follow a communication flow within these captured packets. Now I see all of these are Telnet packets. I told it to just capture Telnet traffic. So I'm gonna right click on one of these and I'm gonna say follow TCP stream. And it's going to give me the information in that Telnet session, which is very, very clear. You see that the username is Kevin. Now, you see that my name appears twice, once in red and once in blue. That's because one color is showing traffic coming from the laptop 
and the other color is showing traffic being echoed to the console on the laptop. So we see both communication flows. Therefore, something that shows up on the screen appears twice, just in different colors. But you'll notice that the password, which is very clear as Cisco, it only appears once because the password is not echoed on my screen as I type it in. But how scary is that that we can easily capture traffic from a telnet session if we have administrative access to this Cisco Catalyst switch and we can see unencrypted traffic very clearly within Wireshark. As a result, we should not be using a Telnet on our network. We should be using something like Secure Shell, which is gonna give us encryption. But a lot of people out there, they're still using Telnet, and we wanna be able to capture that traffic. Now, in this case, we had the advantage of being a legitimate administrator. We were able to get into the console of this Cisco Catalyst switch and perform some configuration. As an ethical hacker, that might not be an option for us. Instead, we may need to do one of those active attacks that we talked about earlier in the video, where we send traffic out to somehow influence traffic coming from our victim machine to be replicated over here on our sniffing machine. But this initial video on sniffing, this is taking a look at two different types of sniffing. We took a look at passive sniffing, which we could do with a hub, or with an ethernet switch configured for span or port mirroring, and we're about to take a look at active sniffing.